Uh, we move on the final speaker of this panel, Dr. Peter Tsai. Dr. Tsai is a distinguished investigator at the Institute of Molecular and Genomic uh, Medicine, National Health Research Institute, and a professor at the Yanmin University in Taiwan, right? So, uh, the title of his talk is Whole Genome Sequencing for Healthcare Management, a Taiwanese Perspective. So, Peter, please start. Thank you very much, uh, June, for the, uh, the kind invitation. <coughs> so I have one disclosure. Uh, this is where I'm working, the National Health uh, Research Institute. So it's a uh, miniature uh, equivalent of NIH in Taiwan. So the, the scope uh, determines the scale, as uh, uh, Chuck put it. So we run the intramural research. We <coughs> facilitate cooperative research uh, in, in Taiwan and internationally, and we give out money to support extra mineral research, and uh, we provide research resources and service. And also, uh, we conduct, uh, provide government health, health policies and biomedical research uh, think tank in the name of NHI Forum. I'm currently also the CEO of this NHI forum. So I feel very great about uh, being participating <coughs> in, in these activities sponsored by the <coughs> forum. So uh, intramural research, uh, we focus on population health, molecular cell, and genomic medicine, which I uh, specialize. I was the chairman of one of the institute uh, or the director of molecular and genomic medicine. Uh, and clinical and translational medicine, biotechnology, and pharmaceutical research. So it's wide spectrum. So that's where I'm coming from. So yesterday we talked about the learning health uh, system. I was really uh, intrigued by this uh, concept, and I have been learning a lot. So uh, we are in a new era of challenges and opportunities. So we, we have uh, rising temperatures, Worldwide, we have unpredictable uh, disasters, uh, na natural and man-made. Our health increase, uh, healthcare budgets is increasing, but we are enjoy the life. Uh, we can call my my family, and I can download the data all the time. So if we got the convenience of a rich uh, data. Uh, of course, uh, we are now having a very high throughput uh, capacity to do all the genomic research and its medical application. I think most important, I think the worldwide, all the society people have become um, more knowledgeable about the relationship between the gene and their health and the disease and their right to the, get the best for them. So from what I see, from what I saw that uh, it's a great opportunity that uh, the genomic science is meeting the medical informatics. Okay. And we all see from different angle. I'm trained as a human genetics with a medical background. I think it's very important to provide, uh, to take these uh, technology and the research project to pra clinical practice as much as we can. Also, we want to take from a population level uh, take, take into public health uh, consideration. We want to exchange data, sharing data with uh, uh, equivalent standards. Uh, I would offer one more thought, is uh, the learning health system, we have to take into account the bioeconomic uh, and socioeconomic issue. This is where I see from Taipei. Uh, I have to tell you, where I'm coming from, okay. Uh, Taiwan is only three hours flight from Sendai. Uh, it's about 36,000 square meter, it's 400 uh, kilometers north-south. We have 23 billion million people packed in, in this island. Uh, most of the people are Han Chinese immigrate to Taiwan in multiple waves. Only 2% of the Taiwanese are aborigines. They are related to the Australian nations, 
in, in the Pacific region. We did suffer or subjected to the threat of natural disaster like uh, Sendai. So we have a major earthquake uh, in 1999, uh, September 21st, and that caused a, a death toll of over 2,000 people. So we have the sympathy with the Sendai area when the tsunami occurred. Uh, Taiwan came a long way. Uh, we have been uh, crossed by by many uh, countries. The Portuguese sailed through uh, the Taiwan Strait and called it uh, Formosa, the beautiful island. And the Dutch people uh, came for a short period of time in the northern and south in the 17th century. And the Qing Dynasty gave this, this beautiful island away to Japan. And Japan uh, governed or ruled Taiwan until the end of World War II. Then came the Americans. So, uh, the American aid uh, came to Taipei in 1962. My friend offered this very interesting uh, photo that was taken in 1963. Uh, Ox is uh, holding a prototype uh, computer. It's an IBM punch car machine. And the Japanese export the high-speed train to Taiwan now. So that's the current uh, situation. So what I'm trying to do today, I think is a mission impossible because I myself doesn't run a biobank, although my friend and colleagues and also my position, I'm quite familiar with the operation of various type of projects that are relevant to this meeting. So I try my best to give my sketch on all this activity that is uh, happening in Taiwan. Okay, I will give uh, more time on this Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Biobank, which is uh, uh, of interest to you. And I will tell you what we are doing with the whole genome sequencing on a very prevalent uh, disease in Taiwan, that's liver cancer. Uh, Mark talked about uh, the, the need to do research and also tell us what we can do the best. So. I will share with you what we have been doing with whole genome sequencing on the liver cancer. At the end, I will tell you a new initiative uh, which uh, I came up with this idea to uh, apply. We are in the process of uh, getting this grant to support a top-down project on bioeconomic. So uh, NHRI from the beginning, so this institute is 20 years old now. So at the, at the beginning, we sponsored a program, uh, infrastructure, uh, is National Health Insurance Research Database, very much like the previous speaker talk, uh, the keynote speaker uh, today. So starting 1995, Taiwan launched a single-payer national health insurance program. So it's to our great advantage to conduct a population-wide. So based virtually over 90% of the resident in this country uh, under one single uh, coverage. So what we did was, uh, has been for every single admission or outpatient, we can take a IC car. I carry that all the time with, with photo. So that will be entered into the, in the central database and also how much money was spent, big or small. So. There has been a lot of study based on this uh, infrastructure. So see the tremendous increase of publication uh, in the past few years. All right. So taking this in a wider, uh, bigger pictures, the government in Taiwan has uh, put a lot of emphasis on the IT infrastructure on a national scale. So this is 1988, we have the National Health Information Network. Uh, then we have the two-point bill version. And two, in 2008, we have a National Health Informatic Project. Although they have different name, and now we have the fancy name, Health Graph. Uh, they are doing pretty much the same thing to incorporate the IT uh, technology to manage the, the medical informatics issues in Taiwan. 
So this is, will be a new project, uh, the government-sponsored project, uh, starting uh, uh, last year. So we'll take the personal health uh, record, uh, we'll cover the health promotion, uh, medical, and, and social welfare, and also big data. So speaking about big data, uh, I think Taiwan used the same idea to promote uh, the study. So in, uh, this is the project uh, run at the uh, Institute of Biomedical Research in Academia Sinica, a national academy type operation in Taipei. So this is a simple cartoon to show to the general public. I apologize because I borrowed this slide and this was for the general public, so they are in uh, uh, Chinese caption, but, but I believe a lot of my Japanese friends can read this, okay. Uh, these are the simple photo, uh, the cartoon. You can see we will collect the normal, the healthy people, and uh, with time, we'll see how it is age and how it is subject to the environmental change. And we can conduct research and the doctors can take advantage of uh, this uh, research project. All right. So the, the goal, the target is to collect 200,000 uh, cohort of people, individual from the community, and also in parallel, we'll collect a disease arm uh, with a total of 100,000 individuals. But I have to say, uh, this program is starting very slow, and in particular on the disease arm because of the uh, regulation of, on the biobanking and then the IRB is, is uh, this arm is still uh, beginning. Right, these are the some national uh, pro uh, promotion program putting on the cap and also on TV. I think this is the important slide for where we stand now. So I, I borrowed this slide from my colleague at Academia Sinica. Uh, the community cohort was approved in 2012, almost uh, three years now, or less than three years. So as uh, of uh, January this year, there has been 32,000 people uh, recruited. So, this will be a 10, 12, uh, 12 years uh, program, target for 200,000. Uh, I think there's a bias. I don't know why the women are more interested in, in at, until now, uh, more uh, have higher interest in, in joining this uh, program. The majority of the subjects are aged between 50 to 59. And we, uh, like everyone, we collect the uh, plasma, the Y cell and, and, and extract DNA. Uh, I hope you can see in the bottom, these are some of the phenotyping data I found is very interesting and maybe uh, we can think and talk more about it. This is the BMI distribution of, of the subject collected so far, uh, uh, divided by uh, different gender. And these are the biochemical or parameters that has been included. And I just found out that uh, uh, the so-called heap to weight uh, ratio, uh, a lot of them are abnormal. I don't know what it means, but is I think we have to repeat the uh, London health uh, cycle to, to find out what, what this is. Okay, and these are the, the data for the triglyceride, uh, cholesterol, and the liver function. I think this is interesting because uh, I don't see, I don't think you will have this kind of data uh, or high incidence of the abnormal liver function up to 10% uh, in, in Taiwan. That's maybe due to the uh, HBV has been a prevalent disease uh, in Taiwan. And the last two are urea acid level and also the micro albumin in the urine. Okay, I think this is also interesting because Taiwan has a lot of patients that subjected to chronic uh, kidney disease. So uh, dial dialysis costs 
is a major uh, issue in, in Taiwan. Uh, so, and these are specific disease category. Uh, similar to the Japanese efforts, uh, there has been a adoption of the epimetric uh, genotyping efforts to uh, genotype up to 33,000 uh, subjects now. So we have a, a genotype data for these uh, individuals. Also, uh, the, up until last year, we have uh, sequenced whole genome of uh, 100 individuals in the pilot study, and it will reach 1,000 uh, this year. But uh, I think this data will be also very useful and interesting to compare with the available uh, data. Uh, speaking about the Taiwanese uh, SMP, but uh, this data is not based on the whole genome sequence data, it's just taken from uh, the public uh, available SMP. Uh, there are 353 SMP and with other uh, markers uh, included in this initial version of the uh, Taiwanese biobank chip. Uh, I told you about the, the goal of whole genome sequence with this uh, normal cohort. It will reach 1,000 uh, this year. These are the uh, variant sequence uh, uh, discovered so far. On, on the disease arm, this is a little bit uh, loose uh, organization. So what the, the government or the organizer did was to to ask for proposal and to review and then support some of the initial pilot project on these uh, diseases, including breast cancers, uh, uh, colon cancer, lung cancers, uh, and so on. And these are the coordinator and the hospital uh, that participating in this uh, different uh, project. Okay. Among them, I think uh, liver cancer has been a very unique strength of uh, research in Taiwan. Liver cancer is very uh, important in Asia and also in sub-Sahara uh, Africa. So this is one of the major cancers uh, in Taiwan due to the uh, high prevalence of HBV in infection. Uh, we are very proud that uh, almost 20 years ago, we identified this issue. So it's actually a perfect example of a learning health uh, system. Then uh, we realized the, perhaps the high incidence of liver cancer is due to this uh, HPV infection. And the government take action to be the first country to do universal nationwide hepatitis C vaccination. And it has been almost 20 years now. So by now, the, the kids that is infected with uh, HBV has reduced almost tenfold, okay? And the incidence of the childhood uh, liver cancer dropped by three to, two to threefold, or threefold. So we still are having a lot of patients uh, with uh, liver cancer. So we want to do a cross-section study now. So we have a Taiwan liver cancer network involved in multiple uh, hospital, major hospital in Taiwan. And this is housed and supported by our institute. Uh, so it's run with a, a grant support and, sup and we'll send out a, a nursing team to each of the hospital will collect clinical data, tissue and, and, and blood and bank in uh, our institute and also the, uh, the biological uh, serum sample. So this is by far the largest collection of uh, tissue uh, material. Almost uh, over 7,000 cases with 4,000 frozen tissue and paraffin section are available. Uh, in Taiwan, or, and is support the research 
uh, worldwide. So taking advantage of these uh, unique uh, problem and also resources, myself as a cell molecular biologist and genetics by training, so I have been taking genotyping and sequencing approach. So I will quickly run through because I, I understand most of the, the audience here is are not uh, uh, laboratory based. So what I'm, I'm trying to share with you is with my pilot project uh, using the whole genome sequencing, uh, we can determine that this liver cancer is chromosome profile. So the first is uh, we begin with by taking 32 cases. We did a SMP like 300, is, uh, 300 uh, Illumina 300K. We can determine the, the copy number to, to show that chromosome 1Q and AT has uh, DNA implication. On the other hand, chromosome 4, uh, 16, 17 has uh, DNA copy loss. So it's quite consistent with the finding that liver cancer genome is, uh, is chaotic, is a, has a lot of genomic instability. So as a pilot project, we, I took uh, eight cases of very well characterized uh, cases. Uh, most of them are male. These are the age, and this is the uh, virus infection uh, history and the P53 uh, mutation type. Know that R249S is a very uh, important signature uh, for the exposure to uh, apatoxin D1, which is a fungi-associated uh, environment toxin. Uh, these are uh, one of the uh, DNA repair uh, gene uh, PRP4 expression level. So these are the basic information. So we send out these uh, A to, very, uh, to two sites in Asia for the ICX10 uh, sequence. At that time, I haven't <laughs> talked to Masi. I would have done it differently if I know uh, Masi has the capacity. But at any rate, we compare the performance of these uh, array versus the whole genome sequence. So this is the, the normal tissue. So it would look quite normal because the, the B allele, the variant frequency will stay in the middle. Okay, for those who are not uh, genetics or molecular virus, you can see how uh, chaotic this is just revealed by the, the pattern. Okay, so there are the DNA copy gain and loss. So the pattern just quite different. So this is the pattern or the chromosome profile predicted by the chip. And we can easily extract the information based on the 300 uh, markers and to show how consistent. So the, the right-hand panel is the whole genome sequencing. So the, con the, the conclusion was the whole genome sequence information based on the variant allele frequency is quite consistent with all the uh, conventional method. This is another way to do uh, the chromosome profile. That's called uh, log R ratio. So that basically is to measure the intensity or how many reads you can obtain for each the nucleotide position. And this is the, the data, again, from the SM, SMP array. And these, in the middle panel, is the whole genome sequence. We extract these 300,000 300, data points. And of course, they look similar. That's, that is to say the data is very consistent. The correlation is reaching 0.99 or 99% between these two technologies. But if we take all the data, see how much improvement. If we have more data point, the resolution is uh, much enhanced. So these are the collective uh, profile of eight uh, cases of hepatoma or liver cancer. To show the pattern that is, or we focus on chromosome one. We knew that chromosome one has, tends to have amplified. So these, the log R ratio when it's zero, that means that the DNA copy number is equal. When it's above the baseline, that means there's a DNA uh, amplification. And you can see these are distinct patterns. 
And then we can take it as a whole. We, uh, they are asking one biological question is, if we have this particular in, uh, signature of uh, mutation, that's suggesting these cases are subjected to alpha toxin uh, exposure uh, with a different etiology, whether they will have more genomic instability measured by the area of the mega, in terms of mega basis, uh, whether they are different. And indeed, th with the same hepatitis B infection, those that carry the, uh, with the infection or the exposure to this uh, fungi toxin will have more uh, area involved uh, in, in the genomic instability. And similar, similarly, although the, uh, because the number of cases is small, it's not statistically significant, we can count inter-chromosome rearrangement by, because this is the pair and read, we can, by reading one read, uh, map to one chromosome, the other to, to the other, we can predict this uh, inter-chromosome rearrangement. Again, it appears that they, they are different. Uh, most interestingly, I think the most recent data, we look into the phenomenon called homozygous deletion. So in other words, the, the, the gene at that particular end just gets thrown out, okay? So we did, uh, from these eight cases, uh, we look for homozygous deletion with our algorithm. And we confirm that if we, because uh, this deletion is about 30 kb in size. We design primer that is on the two end of this break point. In a normal tissue, it will not amplify because it's too far apart. With this deletion, you can see that you can see a predicted size and we sequence confirm that indeed uh, these cases. So seven, uh, three out of eight cases has this recurrent homozygous somatic deletion and then we increase the number of cases to, to 150, and we, collect, we get the DNA from Hong Kong and uh, a separate cohort, and confirm that these uh, recurrent hormones like Sagas deletion, the average frequency is um, about 20%. So a significant proportion of these uh, liver cancer will have uh, these uh, 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 chromosome deletion. This is only one of the, the region. So the strategy is to share with you is if we do 60X uh, sequencing and we turn out we simulate the data, we can actually do that by 10X and we can predict uh, this kind of homozygous deletion and we can design specific primer to uh, generate this uh, homozygous deletion pattern. So I, I hope I didn't uh, say too much about this uh, technical issue, but uh, for the cancer parts, I think whole genome sequence, uh, sequence predicted genotypes were highly consistent with those called by the SMT array. So that's no surprise. High coverage DNA sequencing provide detail of the structure changes, including single base substitution, insertion deletion, and chromosome reader and homozygous deletion. I think what the uh, strategy here for the cancer study is uh, by invest, investigating these genetic events in specific chromosome location, we should, should advance our understanding about what's going on on, on this specific uh, region and its role in uh, oncogenesis. And we can help classify and manage these cases. So toward the end, I would uh, share with you our new idea which we'll put into action. Hopefully we'll get money to do that. So we were interested in, in these two extremes of life. So those kids, be, uh, the youngster before 30 years old, and those above 60 and, to, and 70 and 80, will get as much information as possible on the gene expression, epigenetic uh, cytokine profile, and immunoglobin gene profiling. And we'll collect uh, cases focusing on a, a topic. I think that will be relevant to your interest, a topic of dermatitis, cancers, autoimmunities, metabolism, and neuroregenerative disease. Of course, we chose these uh,
disease for a good reason. Uh, this project will be part of the government-sponsored uh, bioeconomic uh, project and will be operated by our uh, institute. And the, the pilot project will focus in on the technical, ethical, and social economic uh, consideration. So the key question, I don't have the answer now, is uh, I, we hope through this uh, pilot study, we want to ask what are the general concerns about genetic factors in health and disease. So I think it's important to tailor to the need and the interest of the population that can make this project a sustainable. I think it's important to, to, to couple our research interests uh, with the, the national need. And also we need to figure out what are the measures that are required to maximize the utility of the genomic data. I'm very aware of worldwide, even in US, Europe, we are short of the counselor. We are short of uh, medical doctors who can deliver the data to the general public and to explain what these uh, variants mean. So I think we share the same interest about the family study, the Dutch study, and the Tohoku uh, Tomo study. I, I'm a trained as a genetist. I believe the family study should help us understand what's the, the meaning of this uh, variant. So uh, I told you I'm not the person running the biobank, but I got a lot of friends and also with the position of our institute. So I got this uh, help from my colleague, uh, Dr. Zhang. He's an expert on medical informatics. Uh, these are the person who are responsible for the Taiwan, Taiwan biobank. And I knew they are coming in April to visit Tohoku. So I'm sure they will have a good interaction. And I hope I made a good introduction for you to uh, further uh, explore the possibility of collaboration. Uh, I am grateful to uh, Dr. Huang, who operated very successful uh, this uh, unique Taiwan liver cancer network. At the end, I would appreciate this opportunity June and Marcy to invite me. I have been, a, it's a learning experience for me to share uh, my idea and what and share with you what we are doing in Taiwan. I think parallel developments are very important. What are doing in Dutch, in Japan, or China, or any, anywhere. We can do a very good comparative analysis to find out what's common and what's unique. I think sharing the data with equipment and good quality is important. Moreover, I think we will foster friendship, which are essential for uh, this spirit. So I thank you for your attention. I will take any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much for Dr. Tsai. Uh, Mark. I think one of the things we've been talking a lot about is the red side of the loop that Dr. Friedman talks to. You have the health cloud, you've got a single payer system with incredible demographic information, you have genetics, you have the emphasis on the more educated young and more productive young and caring the elderly, That and you have the U-Life Village, all these things. It seems to me you are in an ideal position to really demonstrate how a combination of social and economic factors can play into this. And I, I take it that's what you really mean by the bioeconomics of yes. this, correct? Yes, correct? It's unbelievable. Thank you, Mark. I think I will uh, take uh, Charles' uh, language. We have many circles. We have big circle, we have fast running circle, uh, we have slow circle. Uh, I think one of the strategy we should share is to how to make sure the public understand and support so uh, the government will pay for uh, these projects. We need to lay out some of the short-term and mid-term, uh, short-term I mean three years, mid-term maybe five to ten. I, I, I believe that the, the long-term fruit 
will be fantastic 10, 20 years from now. So we need to harvest uh, occasionally and we show that what we are doing is good for the people and the country uh, in, in many, uh, at the many level. Uh, and of course, uh, we do the science. Uh, that's what we, we try for. Masi. Peter, that, that's a great talk. Thank you very much. And I have the, a couple of questions. First, the, the vaccination of the HBV uh, in your country is great. And uh, how was the outcome? Uh, the dramatic decline of the liver cancer? Yes. Uh, the outcome was shown um, in many uh, papers, including in neuro medicine. So uh -huh. we can only measure the childhood cancer now. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, people like me, which was not uh, uh -huh. vaccinated, so uh, we don't know. We, we can't mm -hmm. see the long-term effect on the adult yet. But s taking the infection rate by the HBS antigen positive, it dropped by 10%. Uh, that was a, the study uh, uh, reporting in year 2009. That was 15 years after the vaccination program started. By now, it's have been 20 years, okay? So uh, in that data, they showed that the, in, the infection rate dropped by tenfold. And the childhood cancers, uh, the relative risk uh, decrease uh, by a factor of three to four, okay? I think with time, uh, this effect, so in terms of the taking this as an example, that for the learning health system, we need to review the performance and readjust uh, the, the program. So uh, I knew the, the, the key PI, Professor Chang, who is a National Academy member, just elected. She continued to analyze why some vaccination fail. So that's another issue. And why some people don't want to get vaccinated. Okay. Uh, that's kind of the thing. But in general, it's, it has been proven that by carefully analyze the cohort, I have to thank American uh, Bestie. Uh, he's a, uh, a pop epidemiologist. He's working in Taiwan. He was the first one to He's taken from the public uh, servant who take a regular health check, and he find out that the liver infection has a link with the liver cancer. And then he advocates this idea of universal HPV vaccination. It's proven that cancer can be prevented by vaccination. It, for, for us, it's common sense now. It's, it's understandable. Chronic inflammation will lead to a lot of bad things that lead to liver cancer. And my next question is the experience of the Chidon uh, near Shanghai. Yeah, the experience Chidon. of the yeah. Chidon uh, tells us the aflatoxin intoxication uh, heavily by corn, and the storage of the corn is the problem. Yeah. But recently, they are changing from eating the corn to the rice. But then the, the liver cancer, uh, hepatic carcinoma ratio, dramatically dropping. Yeah, I think that's a classic example which I use to teach uh, cancer biology. So Keaton is a province north of uh, Yangtze River. Uh, they showed that in that particular peninsula, the incidence of liver cancer is way high. So they then compare uh, what happening in terms of HBV infection, which is a major factor. It turned out to be the same throughout the whole province. And then they map the concentration of alpha toxin B1 exposure is highly concentrated and correlated with the liver cancer incidence. I think that's not enough. So we need to do something. Then the, uh, as Marcy indicated, you have to change your lifestyle and you make it uh, uh, a, a good result at the end. Yeah, to induce that. That's oh, the key issue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, then we understand the mechanism. Yeah. Is there anything else? Also, do you have any comments to his general analysis?
Yeah, you have uh, do analysis of the copy number variation and analysis for the uh, same array and uh, whole the machine and you uh, you uh, read to the conclusion the uh, whole the and quality is equal, almost equal and uh, oh, I think yeah, yeah, compatible yeah. and uh, I think uh, I agree for that and uh, we are doing such kind of similar analysis and uh, our conclusion like this and uh, now uh, you are trying to seek 1,000 and uh, you will reach to our scale and uh, we want to uh, collaborate and do some additional uh, work, for example, the pipe to analyze with the same pipeline and something to compare your variants, our variants for fault and collaboration is very useful, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good opportunity to to do the comparison analysis by end of this year, the Taiwan Biobank population cohort will reach the same uh, scale as you uh, did here. Yeah. Anything? So, thank you, Peter. Thank and you. now we have the.